Emma Byrne, good morning to you. Good morning. How are we? We're there. That's that's. I mean, we're <laughs> ish there, but as Kathleen just been outlining, but uh, we got what we wanted last night. Just. Yeah, we did, and you know, it was fantastic. Everybody was absolutely elated, as I was. But I did have to question, what am I so happy about? Because I didn't really understand if we had qualified for the playoff or if we had to qualify to qualify again mm. or or what was going on. But yeah, it's it has sunk in overnight. And yeah. it feels very good indeed. We'll all be re-watching Kathleen's explainer there over and over again just to make sure that we absolutely have it right when we're chatting to our mates in the pub tonight. But um, that notwithstanding, can you just put it in context for us, Emma? There's probably nobody better we could have on the line to put this in context from the journey that Irish football has been on to get to this stage. Yeah, I mean, it's what we've been working on for the last... 50 years basically well obviously I wasn't playing that long but me personally certainly the last like 21 years we were trying to get to this point and through hard slog and sweat and tears we didn't get there which was uh, always, always going to be a massive regret and, and disappointment but these girls did it and it just just felt absolutely amazing I'm glad that we didn't do uh, much commentating after that because I was well enough I needed a little break <laughs> The, uh... um, it's just great and it's great to see a lot of older players there you know from the past and everybody just on a complete high you know and, and you just feel a part of it as well so it's just fantastic to see that you know such a relief as well I just feel relieved that we can say that <clears throat> we've actually qualified for the playoffs and if we can go even one step further obviously that would be just incredible mm. I do think uh, that that uh, that certainly fed into it last night. What just is it too much to expect? Like the the near misses that you talk about and very recent near misses as well, is it too much to think that what happened last night is a really pivotal moment in the future of women's football here? That that now that belief is there, and obviously there's a lot of work still to be done, but to have gotten over that hurdle, that it can be a pivot moment for Irish women's football. Um, I mean, every time you improve or you go further in a stage, you know, it's all, it's a great, you know, thing to, to work on, you know, and if they don't get through, I don't even want to say that, but it, imagine, <laughs> um, you're going to be talking about how close we got and we got, to, you know, you need to go a step further. But again, it's, it's another game. We haven't qualified yet. It's not it's not going to change things in women's football. It's not going to be a massive, you know, um, as you say, pivotal point, unless we qualify it. I'm <laughs> being honest, I don't want to put a damper on it. Um, whereas, on the other hand, if we do manage to, to win those two games, hopefully just two games, um, I think, you know, that's going to be a game changer, a massive, massive game changer. And all those people that have been putting money into it and backing and supporting the girls, will reap the rewards and want to invest even more. And I think that's what we need. That's what we need here in Ireland in women's football. I was saying to the guys earlier that I was watching the uh, preview show uh, last uh, last night before the game and I was fully convinced, having listened to yourself and Olivia, that you know we're going to win this game 5 or 6 nil. And then suddenly, two minutes into the game, I was like, Emma, you've really led me down the garden path here. What is no. it? What, 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 is, there some, is there a deep, deeper problem there that, I mean, you know, it's, We'll we'll celebrate what happened last night, and that's right, and uh, luxuriate in it. But also that thing of just—I mean, it wasn't just two or three minutes. There was it took until forty-three minutes, I think, of the game where we sort of created our first clear-cut chance. Is there something in our mentality that that needs addressing there in terms of our ability to be the favourites for a game like that? Um, I don't even think it was the mentality like just looking at the game it's really hard for me to keep my emotion out of it by the way so when I'm commentating it's like a personal thing for me so I get a bit <laughs> frustrated um, we just didn't play which was really frustrating for me because we are a better team than Finland Finland were one of the poorer teams in the Euros so I wanted Ireland to go out and show that we can compete against you know the Spains we've shown we can compete against Sweden but you know we deserve to be in in the finals and it was disappointing for me that we didn't play from the beginning because we could have dictated that game and we could have won it very very comfortably and um, you saw how dodgy they were at the back you saw how dodgy the keeper was you know that was a game for us to win at least 2-0 and be comfortable and that's all I wanted I wanted the girls to come off the pitch and feel like they're confident to play and they're able to to compete at that level 
And instead, we were talking about, you know, just scraping through. The second half was a different game, to be fair. But the first half for me was even from, you know, right from the keeper kicking long. And I'm like, nobody does that anymore. That kind of play is, doesn't exist. And you didn't see any team doing it in the Euros, even Northern Ireland, who got a fair old thrashing. They were still trying to, trying to play. And I know we were looking for a result and you just want to get to that next stage and whatever, however you get there. Uh, it doesn't matter, but we do need to start putting the ball in the ground and playing. I think the reason Denise O'Sullivan and Rusha Littlejohn were in there as our, our midfielders is because they're ballers. And if you play those two in midfield, uh, you have to try and play through the midfield because otherwise it's pointless having them in there. You just bypass the midfield, which is what we were doing. And it wasn't working, so... If we're going to get to the final, this this has to change a little bit and you have to have a plan A, plan B, plan C and you have to be able to execute those plans. And for me, I'm hoping plan A will be try to play. If that doesn't work, then maybe play the longer balls until you can go back to try and play in through the midfield. Um, and, you know, the, the girls know that, the girls feel that they want to play football as well. They want to play through the midfield. They want the ball to their feet. It just means players get lost, you know, in that kind of, system and the way we play like Jessica Zhu for example she's a very good player she was completely lost in that first half she wasn't sure if she was to drop back into midfield because midfield was struggling um, but she was supposed to be playing high in a three so just you know a little bit more um, you know the, the jobs they know exactly what they're doing and, and try to put the ball in the ground and play because we have ballers in that team I think it's interesting there that you say about them knowing <clears throat> what they were supposed to be doing because when we were talking about it in the preview show yesterday, we were all so excited at the fact that Katie was playing a bit higher up the pitch. It was something everyone had called for. And I was listening to some of the post-match interviews and I can't remember, was it Lily Ag or Denise O'Sullivan was saying that they had been set up to defend. And I was like, I was confused by that comment because we did end up having to defend with the way we played in that first half. But it's kind of like what you were saying there where it seemed like there was a really... There was a lack of the team actually knowing what they were supposed to be doing or where they were supposed to be. And I don't think it was the fact that fi purely that Finland were putting us under so much pressure that people were losing their heads. Because as you say, we know we're a better team. We know we have better ability. So do you think it was a, a lack of a clear team plan going into it? Or was it just a case of the team went in and just got a bit caught up in the moment and weren't able to properly execute what they've been told? Um. I, do, I think it is uh, trying to be positive uh, in setting up a system, trying to be positive in a 3-4-3, three, three, which is a very, uh, you know, confident, positive system. But realistically, it's not. It's It was a 5-2-3 most of the first half, which wasn't working. As, as we just said, midfield were getting completely overrun. When actually three at the back would have been absolutely perfect. And it's what they're going to have to get used to. And Finland played two up front um, with Salstrom and Rantala. We only needed three at the back. And you can push Jamie Finn and Megan Campbell on a little bit. But we were pinned in. We stayed back. We were extremely deep in the first half. I know Finland wanted to play that ball in behind. But the ball was skipping on. They could have pushed on a little bit. Courtney Brosnan was very good. She was starting very high. She was able to collect all those balls in behind. So for me, I'd want to help the midfield. Denise and Rusha were just getting absolutely, you know, completely stretched in that midfield. Just whatever you need to do, whether you need to push, I'd push, push Megan Connolly in there. There was no need for her to be at the back in a back five. I'd push her in and, and keep my four at the back and just have that three in midfield, especially in that time we were getting overrun and Finland looked very, very dangerous. You know, Sumanen in there was having an absolute field day. Mm. But that changed in, in the in the second half. But my thing was, if that happens against a better team, a team that can finish, because Finland's final ball was pretty shocking. If they were playing against a good team that can finish, we would have been in a bit of trouble there. You know, we were inviting them on. Finland had really nice passes to play, really nice through balls. They just couldn't finish them. We might have been two or three nil down at half time. And you just can't afford those kind of goals at, at you know, the high level. But it, again, it's all a learning curve. I spoke to some of the girls, they, they know exactly what they need to do and they know where the problems were last night. 
in the first half. They're intelligent players. Um, it changed in the second half, as I said, which we were very happy to see. It's interesting, Emma. We talk about uh, earlier, you know, the Irish, the Irish players nearly learning from the from the heartbreak of of not qualifying for the Euros. But even more interesting, perhaps, is, is listening to Katie McCabe after the match yesterday, and she's talking about the fact that before this campaign, they would have played a lot of higher seeded teams, big teams, uh, and well known players. Like, is that an important aspect of it too? That this Irish team maybe are getting used to those high stress moments and playing against the biggest teams in the world. Yeah, of course. You know, they need that. Um, they need to play against higher levels in friendly so they can get themselves organised. Um, you know, we when we were playing, when we nearly qualified uh, many years ago, we were playing against boys teams and, and it really helped us, you know, that higher level, faster pace. You have to think quick. You have to organise yourself a little bit quicker um, and problem solve. And they needed that. But, I mean, the main thing is the improvement is coming from club level and girls going to England playing for, for clubs over there training with players that are very very high standard day in day out and you can see that in the players that that's what's happening Yeah Tuesday night obviously we're uh, we've been going through all the permutations and trying to figure it out and uh, we're, we're somewhat the wiser but bottom line is we obviously got a win on Tuesday night as well. What's the, there might be some enforced changes. I mean, I don't know, I was going to say Lily Agus sort of played her way into the, pay, into the team. She might be sort of into it regardless. Um, she was fantastic. She was, I, I was very happily uh, surprised with Lily Ag, to be quite honest. Yeah. We had her at the Arsenal Academy again many years ago. And um, she was good, but never could never break through to the the first team. Of just n not really a first team squad player. So it was great to see her getting on out there and doing a really good job. Really impressed with her. Yeah, and she probably comes into it then, Emma. Like what what uh, you know, just on the basis of what you're saying there. If you draw that thread then through to Tuesday night, what do you think in terms of shape and and personnel? Well. <laughs> I'm hoping, you know, I don't think they'll change much. I think, I'm not sure Megan Campbell will play. Um, I think uh, Chloe Mustaki did a good job when she came on as well. That's not a problem. The only thing is the throw-ins, which are just out of this world. Mm. Um, I think uh, Lily Ag will hold her position in there. She did really well. Rusha Little John John is, um, is, is injured. Not sure she'll be back. Obviously, Niamh Fahey's out, so that will... They'll just keep that those back three in Megan Connolly, Louise Quinn, and Diane Caldwell, and I'm just I'm just hoping that Jamie Finn and and Mustaki, if she's playing, can push up higher and create that four in midfield. It's what we need. We saw Slovakia in Dublin; they're no slouches. They they played really well. They can keep the ball really well, and have some really nice uh, parts of their game. So you know we have to be on form when we go over there. We want the three points. It's very very important. We get those three points. Um, so I just, you know, I'm hoping that we see a more attack in Ireland and, and a, a team that's going to play and keep the ball. Um, because when you've got a player like Kate McCabe, who, by the way, was not in the game enough for me, like, that's my player. I'm going to try and get that ball. Denise O'Sullivan, as soon as you get the ball, switch it out to Kate. We didn't see enough of that in the first half, did we? We didn't. Uh, she wasn't involved enough. And I'm just hoping that when they do play, and play through the midfield that they'll be able to find the likes of Katie um, and, and Jess Zhu when she drops in hopefully uh, we'll see her as well because I'm looking forward to see how she does in a different game um, you know I'm hoping we, we're going to see some football and, and see how they can play you know they know they can play football and they want to so looking forward to that uh, Funny Emma you mentioned the game the, the game all those years ago back in uh, 2009 for that Euro qualifier uh, and, and like Katie McCabe mentioned yourself and Yvonne Tracy and Kira Grant and, and girls like that, you know, by name after the match as well. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of advice handed over to to the current squad from players like yourself when you're when you're in discussions with them over the coming weeks, um, about what the playoff experience is like because you, you're so close to a to a major finals and yet so far and there's so much work to do. So, what will your advice be to those current players in terms of dealing with the heat and the cauldron of of a playoff environment? Yeah, I mean, I don't really need to speak to any of those girls. These have plenty of experience. They've been in, in big games and cup finals and, you know, they're all playing at a level now where, where they have that pressure. So, you know, the players in that squad, like Louise Quinn, Nick Fahey, Kate McKay, they'll be speaking to the girls. They, they'll know exactly what to say to them. Um, 
but the only, you know, it's such a massive game. They're going to have to work on calming themselves down and focusing and, you know, really getting their game plan right and knowing exactly what they need to do in that game. And even if it is a little bit, you know, nasty, if you're trying to soak up the pressure, that's really difficult for these young players to have that mindset of, yes, you're going to be without the ball, you're going to soak up that pressure and then you're going to try and take your chances. I mean, they're going to have to do that extremely well. Um, but again, keeping the ball is so key when you do win it back. And again, last night, didn't see them doing that very well in the first half. So just, you know, these things that give your players confidence when, you, when you're on the ball to protect it. You don't have to, like, try and get rid of it. You can protect the ball and draw the foul. Hopefully Megan Campbell will be back. And, you know, those throw-ins are going to be a massive advantage for us. One last one. Just, am I reading your comments about Katie, Emma, that she wasn't played in the position she should have been last night? I, we're obliged by contract to always talk about Katie McCabe's position, of course. But uh, I know that people are, are uh, uh, blue in the face listening to the debate. But I just wanted to clarify on your comments. Are you thinking that the like uh, dip in her performance last night was more to do with tactics uh, rather than um, the player herself? No, I think she was playing in her position. She had loads of space. She had oodles of space on that left-hand side. It's just we couldn't get the ball out to her. Um, I think we got, like, we actually passed the ball out to the left-hand side maybe three times in the first half. Uh, so, you know, not enough. She wasn't on the ball enough, and that was nothing to do with her. She was in, she was in great positions. We just couldn't get the ball into midfield for them to then switch it. They were just overloaded. So just needed an extra player in there to try and switch that ball over to Katie so yeah I, she was playing higher up we were very happy with that then started to drop back a little bit towards uh, the end of the, <laughs> the first half um, so it was time it was a good time for the first half the, the, the break came at a good time and then second half again just putting that extra player in there made a big difference yeah well hopefully it all comes together Tuesday night and we'll be a bit clearer about exactly what we need to do Emma pleasure as always thanks a million thank you thanks